Welcome back, everybody. We are back in an episode of Valkyria Chronicles. Uh, we cut that episode short um, last time because it was a, a mission, so there was in cutscenes. So now it was just a mission. It'll be a short 10 minute episode. Just, if there's cutscenes taking a bulk of it, we'll extend the, the playthrough a little bit. So let's get to it. And yes, we will do this episode. Two hours after the first shots were fired, Bruel was under Imperial control. Oh no. Though a mere skirmish by Empire standards, the raid on Bruel would mark Welkin Gunther's first taste of battle and begin his rise to a Galleon hero. Alicia. I thought I would be ready for this. I knew war meant this might happen. It hurts. Seeing my town overrun like this, seeing all those people killed, it's just not right. How could all this happen? It isn't human, Welkin. We look at those birds and see how wild and free they are. But they all have their own territories. If anything threatens their home, they'll risk their lives to defend it. People are animals too. We do what we have to, when we have to. Animals are in a constant struggle to stay alive, but I've also seen them help each other, almost like they were cooperating in order to survive. Cooperating? That's why I'm so into studying natural science. That coexistence. I want to know how it works. If we could figure that out, mankind could put it to use for our own survival. That's why I want to be a teacher. So that I can pass that knowledge on to the children. I mean, even if we can't completely eliminate war, at least we might learn to live together as one people. You think so? Welks, look! Martha fell asleep, so that makes me the babysitter. See, Alicia? Who's the father? Oh, Who's Martha? He's adorable. Just like you said, even in war, new life happens all around us. Come here. Look, that's your hometown. Someday, we'll come back home again. Yes. Someday soon. I know it. New chapter. Sorry, it's Invisible Urban Warfare. That's what we get. I'll do this episode. Oh, this chapter's just gonna be cutscenes. Oh, not that I mind. Let me just put down my mic. In March of 1935, the, the Empire began its invasion across Gallia's eastern border. Can you hear me? Is it ready for me? Maximilian, commander of the Gallian invasion front, built his army around mobile armor. Girlendio and the other fortresses along the border fell to his tanks in quick succession. Bruel's fall in under two hours was typical of villages in the Empire's path, and the road to the capital bore a steady flow of refugees. Randgris, Gallia's capital, a town secure and stable since ancient times, Within its walls stood the castle Rand Greece, and within its unicorn spire resided Cordelia, Gallia's princess.
Supporting Gallia's policy of neutrality was a system of universal conscription. Under it, all schools required military training each year. In the event of a war, citizens were then drafted into the militia to defend their country. As the conflict with the East grew worse, both Welkin and Alicia found themselves no exceptions to that fate. So these are my new digs. Oh, my uniform. I should get changed before reporting in. Better get ready now. Flares, binoculars, a compass, and a map. Everything you need for a nice hike. Or combat. Welkin? Can I come in? Sure, it's open. <gasps> I'm here. Oh, you're already changed too. Let's see. Not bad, not bad. You look good, actually. So, how about me? Do I look alright in this? Convincing? Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, you look fine. You wear it like a pro. Really? You're not just saying that? Of course not. You look tough. I like it. I like my Oh, good. Tough. I was worried it looked kind of silly. No way. That plating on the back? It's like a coleopterid exoskeleton. Beetle-tastic. Holy what? And did you just say beetle? Uh, Welkin? That's his way of commenting, human. What kind of girl wants to hear that she looks like a bug? A cool girl. Huh? Not just any bug. A rhinoceros beetle. King of the insects. Who wouldn't want that? Uh-huh. I guess I'll just try to take that as a very Welkin sort of compliment. Tell me about that scarf. You've been wearing it since I met you. The bandana? Oh, this? It's part of my uniform from the bakery. Is that right? I don't want to forget the time I spent busting my buns baking. I plan to keep wearing it until I can get back to manning the ovens again. That's great. Once you do, I'll be first in line to get some of that bread. Is that a promise? <laughs> well, I'll be sure to have get plenty of it bread. ready and waiting for you. Absolutely. Hey, if you're ready, we should probably go see the captain now. Well, all right, let's see what they have to say. Okay, don't worry, guys. There'll be a little fight soon, hopefully. Probably next chapter. I think Come in. chapter's just Excuse me, ma'am. Exposition. Galleon Militia Enlistee, Welkin Gunther. Reporting for duty. Ma'am. Galleon Militia Enlistee, Alicia Malkiot. Also reporting for duty. I'm Captain Eleanor Verrat. Commander of this regiment. Gunther, you're promoted to lieutenant. You'll be leader of Squad 7 now. That makes Man. sense. He is Enlistee a Melchiot, uh, university graduate. You're promoted to sergeant. You'll be under the lieutenant's command. Well, Understood? Ma'am! Quick. What do you know? It is you. Nice coincidence, huh, Welkin? Valdio? I had no idea that you'd enlisted. Yep. Yeah. Now that there's a real war going on, I joined up. 
Pretty much all the officer and training boys are here just like you. You know each other? Yes, ma'am. We knew each other at university. Welcome was in science and I was in archaeology. And just look at us now. No archaeology or science. Looks like the two of us are studying war, I guess. Looks that way. It's good to see you. And you. That'll be all for now. There's a strategy briefing later today. But you still have time. Time for you to catch up. You'll be spending a lot of time on the post and in land breeze. They'll be your new home. So get to know them. That'll be all. Report back in time for the briefing. Until then, you're dismissed. All right. Ooh, okay, let's see. Squad barracks. Let's find out. There's going to be a lot of learning here. So we got Alicia, Rosie, and Margo. These are going to be all their main characters in that squad. Important ones. We're walking up there. Oh, they have perks. That's right. And negatives. Uh, I don't know. Mm, doesn't matter. Perks and I think perks and bad. Or I don't want to do that. Okay. okay. Let's let's go to barracks. The barracks. Command field. Ooh, she comes with her combat. Oh, you know we're just getting girls. All the cuties. Just kidding, some guys too. It's good to see you doing the rounds. Welcome. Yes, ma'am. This is the command room. Oh. Use it to structure your squad. Alright. You will have access to both drafted and volunteer recruits. Now that I think of it, Squad 7 is still short on soldiers, isn't it? I'll explain how this works. This is the master list. The recruits have all been assigned classes based on their talents. I should probably touch on the five classes, just so we're clear. No. First off, you have the scouts. Just like the name suggests, they'll be your eyes. Their best asset is their mobility. They can go out, collect intel, then make it back safely. That, and a keen eye for enemies. A good scout can spot a man in tall grass from a hundred yards. That comes at the price of firepower. Their job is spotting enemies, not taking them out. Next up, the shock trooper. They're the ones to break through enemy lines and clean up. They offer excellent offense and defense. As far as combat goes, they're as good as it gets. While they lack any specialized techniques, they also don't have any obvious shortcomings. Think of them as the least finicky unit in your squad, Lieutenant. After them, we have Lancers, then anti-tank units. They're critical when facing armored targets. Their purpose is pretty self-explanatory. In most cases, they're the only way to stop a tank. They're also well shielded from explosives, which conveniently includes tank mortars. Sadly, they're slow and weak to gunfire. Their limited ammo could also be called a drawback. Changing gears, we have the engineers. They handle supplies and perform combat support. They can restock other units' ammunitions, treat the wounded, even repair tanks on site. They can place sandbags for cover, disarm mines, oh, repair towers, you name well, that's it. That's useful. Their actual combat skills are very low. Think of them as combat facilitators. Right. Lastly, we have the snipers. They can shoot down targets from a considerable distance. You won't find better soldiers for marksmanship and range. They can hit targets I can barely see. Sniping rifles also come with scopes that work to augment a sniper's natural eyesight. Drawbacks include low mobility and defense. If the enemy gets them alone, they're done for. That should cover the basics. 
Go ahead and put a squad together now. There's room for 20, and you can swap units at any time. Ramona Litton. Good to be on board, Welkin. The name's Jane Turner. I'll do anything if it means putting holes in imps. My name is Rosina Selden. I'm in with you guys as of today. together with you until this war claims my life. Reporting for duty. Looks like I'll be joining you in Squad 7. I know that voice. Isn't that... Um... Is that Azula? It sounds like Azula. Get her as well. I'm Wendy Chesslock. <laughs> Kaboom. My name's Hector Calvi, sir. I'm at your service from today on. Alright. Hey, I'm Oscar Baylor. Thanks for taking me on board. He seems pretty young. I don't feel I'm Nochi Wordsworth. Hey there, I'm Ika Thompson. I'll try my best. Sound good, Wilkin? Salinas Milton, at your service. I feel 
not going to dodge us. Hi, my name's Elise Moore. Nice to meet you. I feel like they got a Zula to voice a lot of these voices. Am I wrong? Am I crazy? My name is Dallas Wyatt. I'm excited to be. Bye-bye.